ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णात्ते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति शाति ओ वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचानूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु ओम लॉर्ड कृष्ण द प्रिसेप्टर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ द फोर्सेस ऑफ डार्कनेस एंड बिस्टोर ऑफ इमोटैलिटी श्रीमद भगवद गीता इन चैप्टर थ्री इन टाइटल कर्म योग एंड वी आर द लास्ट वर्स फोर्टी थ्री एवं बुद्धे परम बुद्ध्वा संस्थभ्यात्मात्म जहि शत्रु महाबा काम रूपम दुरासुदम दस ओ ग्रेट आर्म्ड अर्जुन यो आर्म बिकम्स ग्रेट नॉट बाय एडिंग मोर बोन्स टू इट बट it is this allegorical way of saying that you do not you do your self effort you do not leave your self effort but perform your effort in daily life with strong muscles in your arms with the strength behind it. knowing that which is higher than the intellect with your mind under your control you should slay this enemy desire which is so difficult to conquer all these are very profound statements and need to be understood with great patience and relaxed mind open heart first is general plan of how do we perceive objects of the world life what is all experiences that come to you what is the general plan and the very simplified version if you didn't have senses your eyes and ears think of the whole world depend upon your five senses such a poor situation <laughs> world so vast so big <laughs> but soul has only five possibilities and any one of the five becomes defective then one fifth of the world goes away from you two senses gone two fifth of the world gone so i will not give you more mathematics <laughs> so this is a brittle world depending upon the five senses <laughs> but these senses do not bring about experience by themselves mind has to be there so mind now come to mind stage mind itself is that the root source of your experience behind the mind we are talking about mind intellect two levels of your mind mind conscious mind brings all the materials brought by your senses 
Intellect gives evaluation. And along with ego, intellect accepts certain things and rejects certain things. And also guides the mind what to do. And the mind guides the senses. But intellect again is not the source, complete source of your experience. Your intellect relates to cosmic intellect. The divine intellect that has planned the entire cosmos. That intellect, cosmic mind, Hiranya Garabha, that intellect is behind your intellect, the root source. So therefore, your intellect has a special quality. That quality is there if you continue to be just intellectual. That intellect will give you all about the world. And it is vast. But if you allow that intellect to become sattvic, purified, based on nirmal man, purified mind, even in daily life you can understand the difference. If your mind is calm, relaxed, you are joyous, your intellect gives you subtler way of looking at things. The intellect does not waste its time over trifles. Picks up the source, brings about a quick understanding. So follow that simple point that everybody experiences. That's why people always talk about, give me a little time. <laughs> Let me work upon it. By that you imply you want to allow your intellect to be free, not crowded. And then the moment you have that calmness, depending upon how calm you could be, <laughs> you bring about a response. So, simple plan has to be understood. Source behind all is Brahman, the Absolute. That Brahman plays the role of cosmic mind. We remember through Maya, Prakriti. So, every soul is essentially Brahman. But, due to ignorance, the soul is dependent upon these senses, mind, intellect, these four prominent supports. All these supports the soul doesn't need. The essential nature of the soul is Brahman. For easy understanding, think of Sun, ref reflected sun in a jar. The reflected sun is dependent upon so many things. But the real reality behind the reflected sun is the sun. This point has to enter the heart. The reality behind your soul, the real I am in every individual, is Brahman the Absolute. Aham Brahmas. And that's the project of life. That's called self-realization. And in order to attain self-realization, it is important to see this order. 
how senses should not take you away, they should be guided by your mind. Again, mind should not be the ultimate guide, intellect must guide your mind. An intellect again should not stay just uncultured intellect, it should become intu intuitive intellect. Then you are becoming a channel of the Absolute, God. And ultimately there is neither channel, nothing, God alone. With this the chapter ends. Om Tat Sadeti, Srimad Bhagavad Gita Supanishatsu, Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastri, Sri Krishna Arjuna Samvade, Karma Yogo Nama, Sri Yodhyaya. Thus in the Upanishad of the Bhagavad Gita, the knowledge of Supreme Brahman, the scripture of yoga, the dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna, Ends the third chapter entitled The Yoga of Action. This is the traditional way of concluding. And here's the practical way of Fourth chapter that known as Yoga of Wisdom, more extended name is Jnana Karma Sanyasa Yoga. It gives you insight into wisdom. Which results from renunciation of karma. Karma is so important, but the ultimate goal is to be rid of karma. So in the beginning we call Sakamya Karma, Nishkamya Karma. Living your life Sakamya. Sakamya means you are more led by your senses and less led by your intellect, buddhi. Led by senses means what seems so good. What is preya and shreya? Preya, what is pleasant? Pleasant is so easy to go after. But to be cultured, you need to understand. Simply you don't run after everything that seems dear, dear. It's not like forest with lots of deer running after. <laughs> the world is like a big forest. And all your targets for happiness are dear from a mystical point of view. Every soul is a hunter going after. Every path is dear in Sanskrit is mrig. Every path is called marg. Every path is a channel to go after the deer. I'm distracting you in different <laughs> So, how to come to that state that you don't go after running after so many objects of your desire? And will that ever end? Simple mind has to understand it can never end. <laughs> Even 
you will focus your mind just in one portion, one locality of this globe. You, it, it provides you with so much comfort, etc. And how long would you like to stay in it? And can you secure it? Now we begin. Shri Bhagavan Uvach. Imam vivaswate yogam proktavanaha mabhyayam vivaswana manave parplaha manurikshvaka vevradvit. Lord Krishna says, this imperishable yoga was first proclaimed by me to sun god. The sun god in turn taught this to sage Manu. And from Manu it passed on to King Ikshvaku. Introduces the whole story. <laughs> but it is completely allegorical. Sun God is a symbol of the cosmic mind. So Sun is adored as source of all luminosity. Sun is actually adored as Brahman himself. Jyoti Shama Jyoti, light of all lights. But here in this context, Sun God is the presiding deity of your intellect. I am putting in a different context. Not ordinary intellect, intellect intuitive intellect. So, that one stage Sun God is the deepest level, a climax level within every individual potentiality of enlightenment. From darkness lead me to light and Sun God is that light. In a simple manner, try to understand what makes intellect so brilliant that intellect relates to sun. And then, mind that is in harmony with sun, a channel of the sun, a channel of divine source, that mind is Manu. From Manu comes Manas, and from Manas and Manu comes a Manushya, human beings. And the English term man comes from the same source. So, to be a human being means quality of your mind that makes you different from all other creatures. You are Manushya. And you are inspired by Sun God, the Buddhi within you. And Manu passed it on to King Ikshvaku. Ikshvaku term is a variation of soul that has become aspirant, mumukshu. Mm -hmm. Ikshvaku, Icha has become profound. One who lives one's life 
with the aspiration to attain enlightenment. That individual soul with equipped with that type of resolve is Ikshvaku. So you have all the three right within your personality. Your intellect, the sun, your mind that gives you human values, all wonderful feelings, etc. And your soul with the equipment of mind and buddhi intellect. The soul is well equipped for attaining its goal. Its goal is to realize who am I? Its goal is to discover I am Brahman. Every reflected sun is the sun. Evam param para praptam imam rajarsha yo viduhu sakale neha mahata yogo nashtaha parantapa. O scorcher of foes, Arjuna is described, foes are malas, gross impurities, kama, krodha. Perverted desire, anger, lobha, greed, conceit, pride, and so forth. All these are enemies of the soul. And if your soul has come to develop spiritual strength, then it begins to conquer the enemies and develop divine virtues. And instead of your enemies scorching you, you will scorch them. They will scorch them not with that type of stony heart. <laughs> you scorch them to sublimate them. Remember the three S. For every negative quality, Suppress first thing, move away from it, don't exercise your muscle on it. Substitute, turn your mind to the positive aspect. You are dealing with anger, you don't start saying all the study I have made and still I am angry. I am angry with anger. <laughs> That will not resolve your problem. <laughs> but in spite of the anger, you simply smile and say, all right, you are there, I see through my door, but I won't welcome you. <laughs> because you are full of virus. <laughs> I'm joking, but the idea is now create in your mind I descend from God. I am the embodiment of peace. Shama, love that forgives all the defaults of others. Buddha is shining in my heart. And sit on your chair and drink something cold. <laughs> now, this is called substitute. Instead of anger, you are substituting loving forgiveness. And then what happens? 
you find you are not under the grip of anger. Anger simply gets sublimated and you end up not losing all your mental energy and being under stress, but end up with a relaxed mind and a triumphant heart. So, that's the way enemies are dealt with. If you are dealing with your enemies, your negative qualities, you are parantapa. You are scorching your enemies, sublimating them. So, that's what Arjuna is addressed, O oh parantapa. Every spiritual aspirant, is potential parantapa. So, a scorcher of foes, the royal sages knew this yoga as it was handed down from one to another in regular succession. In succession, as we have already described, from Sun God to Sage Manu, from Sage Manu to Ikshvaku, and then from Ikshvaku, succession of great souls. So, Spiritual teaching that was that is given in any age has its source from the Sun God. And behind Sun God is Brahman, the Absolute. That's what Krishna says. First I proclaim to Sun God. I are in this stage we refers to Brahman the Absolute. It is that Brahman that is needs to be realized. I am Brahman. It is that I am is the highlight. Another point is spiritual teaching is presented to humanity again and again by great souls. But just like dealing with atmosphere, again and again you find low pressure condition of atmosphere. Again and again storm is generated to fill the gap. This is a law of the cosmos. Similarly, again and again what happens? A part of the globe or the whole humanity seem to become rid without spiritual aspiration, without spiritual inspiration. Then a great sage, a great personality comes among them who has attained enlightenment. Now he changes the whole culture, brings spiritual teachings that become scripture. And this has gone on all over the world. Is not confined just to India. <laughs> India is not, not just India. India is the whole earth planet and much more so universe. And 
I'm talking about every country is nothing but the universe. Sayavayam mayatedya yoga prakta puratana bhakto si me sakacheti rahasyam heta duttamam. You are my friend and devotee. Therefore, I declare the same ancient yoga to you, which is indeed a supreme secret. The same yoga that was taught long, long before, now the same yoga I am presenting to you. The spiritual wisdom remains the same. It will be presented in different languages, in different ways, but the wisdom remains the same. <coughs> and how you are my friend and devotee. Now, qualification for becoming a recipient of wisdom, what is that qualification? Develop matri bhavana, God himself is your best friend. Satya Bhav, Arjuna has developed that type of attitude to God. And that's perfectly profound ideal for every aspirant. God should not be viewed by you, someone who is superior, always ready to have a, give you a slap. Or someone who is motherly, in a profound way, friendly. So no matter whatever you are, from friendly source comes cool, solace, proper inspiration, ability to have strength and patience, all that comes from friendly source. That type of attitude has to develop towards God. But while you are developing that attitude, allow that attitude to develop in all relations. And that becomes that to the extent you develop, you become highly qualitative personality. Your soul radiates a spiritual aura. Can experiment it. <laughs> Come with a friendly attitude in the, with the group of people, <laughs> your own relatives and friends, and see everybody becomes joyous. <laughs> your eyes are shining, your teeth are in their place. But if you come with unfriendly attitude, now everybody becomes comes under stress. And you are radiating like dark forces from your face. I will not go into further detail. <laughs> it damages your personality, even though you think that you are asserting your superiority, how great you are. That's how the delusion comes into the mind. 
Look how great am I. One little slap and have thrown them all out. <laughs> but don't be so delighted about that type of strength. Instead, with one joyous smile, you have led them to be peaceful. That is your ideal. Friendliness. Understand, everyone will be touched by friendly attitude to the core of their heart. Unfriendly attitude creates thorns and you have to in the process of karma, each thorn you have to pick up. <laughs> so, that Sakya Bhav has to develop that point Lord Krishna puts in his statement that you are my friend and you are my devotee. Therefore, I declare this same ancient yoga to you. So the moment you have that friendly attitude within your heart, all the yoga that was taught and seemed to be lost as it were, now suddenly googles up <laughs> in your heart. A <laughs> joke. Arjuna Vacha Aparam Bhavato Janma Param Janma Vivasvata Kathame Tadvijani Yam Tomadau Proktavaniti Arjuna asked, You were born much later. You were born just Vasudeva's son, and all these stories known in, in our lifetime here. And that's the story of Krishna. While the sun god was born in the distant past, millions of years before sun existed. How am I to understand then that you taught that knowledge to the sun god in the beginning stages of creation, much before your birth, Arjuna want to clarify the point that sages bring teachings. Teachings seem to come from them. The sages don't say, they may use the word I, this is my teaching, but their I is older than the sun. Figure that out. How can we possible? <coughs> Sages are not the author of the teachings. Sages are the revealers. Just like in science, Newton was not the author of his laws. <laughs> he simply revealed the laws of nature. So much before Newton, those laws existed. <laughs> so much before sages, those, those truths of scriptures existed. Arjuna asks, you were born much later, when the sun god was born in the distant past. 
Tanyaham Veda Sarvani. Now, Lord, Lord Krishna is now replying in the fifth verse. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Bahuni me vyati tani janmani tavacharjuna. Tanyaham Veda Sarvani. Natvam Vetha Parantapa. O Arjuna, you and I have passed through numerous embodiments. I know them all. But you, destroyer of your foes, you do not remember them. That's the difference between Jiva and Ishvara. God is like the sun. No matter what type of illumination, it is the sun. The sun is therefore is aware of everything. But to a reflected sun, there is a big illusion. It knows only within what is within the pot. And when it, it moves away from one pot to another, it doesn't know that it, which pot it was in before. So that's, you were born in so many embodiments. Lord Krishna says, I know them all, but you don't know them. <laughs> Let me give you a little bit. The statement in Sanskrit is Bahuni me vyatitani janamani tavacharjuna. Some English scholar read it <laughs> and came up with a thesis on it that he has come to know when Arjuna was born. <laughs> he was born on Charjun. Month of June fourth. <laughs> Just a bit. Your mind must be relaxed to understand deeper things. <laughs> Ajopitan. Ajopi sannabhyamayatma bhutanami shwaropi san prakritim swamadhishthaya sambhavaya myatma mayaya. I am unborn, imperishable, and the Lord of all beings. Now, switch your mind. To, to a different way of understanding. You are soul, but the soul, the reality behind your soul, as soul you don't know much. You are you're completely limited. You don't even know your own embodiment. But God behind the soul, God is the reality. So. Each time you look within yourself, try to remind yourself that you are not that miserable wretch. <laughs> How could you be? <laughs> because your reality is God himself. And this point is brought out in your experience when you go to sleep. No matter how terrible your life might be, when you go to deep sleep, everything moves away. No memories of the past, no plans for the future. Here and now we have absolute rest, absolute relativity. But that is pointing the fact that if mind is enlightened, the sleep level of experience 
is your constant experience. Your mind is enlightened. If you have come to that stage, then you become Jivan Mukta. And that's your project. How detached can you be from your all mental picture of the world? Mind goes on creating by its thought waves experiences that like in a cinema show. All that show has no substantiality in it. What is substantial is the screen, God behind it. So God is, now how to meditate upon that point. Thinking of God within you in a Vedantic way, coming to a jnana type of practice. Manu buddhyaham kara chittani naham. I am not the mind, I am not the intellect, I am not the ego. I am non-dual, absolute, shivoham, soham, satchidananda swarupoham. I am the embodiment of existence, knowledge and bliss, absolute. Just like you eat food, shouldn't be too quick, chew it. <laughs> now we allow your mind to chew and go deep into what it means, I am pure existence, I am pure consciousness, I am absolute bliss. Allow your mind, that requires your practice, practice of vichar. Seventh verse. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutthanam dharmasya tadatmanam srijamyam. Whenever virtue declines and unrighteousness rises, I manifest myself as an embodied being. This is simple law and very profound. The idea is the creation has a purpose behind it. It is not just left to evolve by some biological laws. There is a purpose. And that purpose is allowing the soul, allowing society, to be inspired by spiritual ideal, to be inspired by saints and sages. The more society turns to saintly ideal, greater is the experience of peace and harmony in the world. Absolute peace and harmony is not, cannot be possible. Because there will be mosquitoes buzzing, fishes in the water, I'm joking, but try to understand. Creation doesn't mean all have become enlightened. <laughs> there is always, there is all levels of souls. But nevertheless, the general feature will be in the world of a sense of harmony, peace, real joyous prosperity. But that's, that does not stay permanent and it should not be viewed as something that you can cure it. This is the nature of the world. Nature of the world doesn't mean that something negative has been imposed upon you. 
It simply means that every soul is being given opportunity. A soul with qualified by negative karmas has its opportunity to act as terrorists. <laughs> soul, on the other hand, backed up by good karmas, has the opportunity to raise his level of awareness to such an extent that evil towards terroristic minds develops a loving feeling. See, each avatara, you must realize, doesn't come in a perfect world. Every avatara comes in a world of most degraded, demoniac personalities. Therefore, avatara's glory is, is raised by people. Each time you sing the glory of Rama, you have to think of Ravana. <laughs> think of Kumbhakarana. Think of Surbhunakha. <laughs> and that, think of any saint or sage. Challenging situations always present themselves. And that's not a negative point. That's a divine plan. The same plan that is allowing the higher soul to go higher and higher. And for lesser souls to go through their karmic purification. All go together. So never imagine that the kingdom of heaven will come down upon the earth. <laughs> From mystical point, from advanced point of view, the kingdom of God doesn't have to come. If you are dreaming, dream experience is not a reality. You don't want the waking world to get into your dream world. <laughs> the world experience is not a reality. This point has become so hard for people to understand. And it is so simple. Think of your source of experience, your brain, your nervous system. How brittle. This entire world and all you think of it, a stretch of imagination, millions of years and evolution and all that. And countless stories. But they are magic played by your nerves, brain. Just little awkward brain living in the, <laughs> like a turtle. <laughs> Some brain sap. <laughs> this is not a postulation, this is a reality. And therefore, the world you are experiencing is not the reality. Therefore, what is real, mind must develop a, a special fervor to discover the real. And that's what satsanga and devotion and all sadhana does. The very same mind that is so busy and alert to go after worldly attainments, go after objects of desire. Now allow the same mind to develop that special insight and a zeal, not jealousy, zeal. <laughs> to realize, to discover Aham Brahmasmi. And that movement is avatar movement. Two, two aspects in it called Ar, Arohan and Avataran. You raise your prakriti, your nature higher and God comes down 
raising is arohan, we are ascending your steps. Mother sees a child ascending the steps and her office is up there, she comes down, <laughs> picks you up <laughs> lovingly. Put together all, you become avatara. You know, Aroha and avatara both have blended in your personality. To human beings around you, you are avatar of God. You are channeling that process that will lead the soul to enlightenment. A human being is the one that can inspire other human beings. Don't, don't talk, talk to the monkeys and bears <laughs> for inspiration. And when you think of the world, do not develop a pessimistic view. Yada yada hi dharmasya, whenever dharma declines, a divine response comes to straighten the path. And people are awakened to follow higher values. The world moves on, allowing the souls virtuous souls to enjoy peace and prosperity. And it cannot be wiped out, it cannot be put into a complete negative state, it's impossible. And with this I'm going to conclude. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Poonasya Poonamadaya Poonamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Shanti